the market also, after we talked about Salesforce, a bunch of the SaaS companies took a dive in the after hours. Freeberg, any thoughts there as we quickly wrap right, Not, not wrap just up. SaaS, but also Dell. And oh, yeah. in particular, Dell reported their stock is down 20% after hours. So I do wonder if there is a slow reckoning underway right now in technology that's, as we talked about in the show, a function of both kind of an economic slowdown, so enterprises making fewer investments, but they, they clearly called out the increased cost associated with AI. So they are spending quite a lot and their, uh, their cogs on AI systems is much higher. And so they're showing a I lot mean, more cash burn. And I think this, this is, is to Chamath's point. Ch Chamath's been talking for a while. This is unsustainable. Guys, I've been saying this now for a month, so let's just be precise again. You cannot spend this kind of money and show no incremental revenue potential. So while this is incredible for NVIDIA, the chicken is coming home to roost. Because if you do not start seeing revenue flow to the bottom line of these companies that are spending $26 billion a quarter, the market cap of NVIDIA is not what the market cap of NVIDIA should be. And all of these other companies are going to get punished for spending this kind of money. Now, Dell is a unique example in the sense that I actually think it's a beneficiary of spend. And I think that it will build data centers and it will actually do well in the move to AI because it's a very smart, positioned pick and shovels provider but the threshold question is where are all these newfangled things that we're supposed to see that justifies a hundred billion dollars of chip spend yeah. a year 200 billion dollars of energy spend a hundred billion dollars of all this other stuff guys this is we're now spending 750 billion dollars this is on the order of a national transfer payment and we've seen nothing to show for it except that you can mimic somebody's voice <laughs> and you can make like a cat jump <laughs> well, um, on another yeah. cat. I mean, making a developer 30 or 40% more efficient, that's actually legit. But I will say I that did That hasn't a TAM. happened yet either. No, that that's totally happened happened. Yet either, that, No, no, that's happening in startups right now. I'm seeing startups with four developers do what just a couple of years ago they would need eight to do. They're, and that's the premise of your uh, 80, I, I 90 think, company, isn't honestly, it? I think that developers I know, can go are, faster with these tools? But these are Yes, but these are aspirational things. When you take, a, for example, a 30,000 person company, it is not true that those engineers now are now all of a sudden as productive as 130,000 employees. It's not even true that a thousand employee company is as productive as a 4,000 person company. And the reason is for one very specific thing. Even as all of these next, gener next generation models get released, the practical threshold problem is when you introduce a completely new way of doing things into an existing workforce, what happens is people push back. And even in the companies that I own, where I could theoretically mandate, you must use these tools because I am the owner of this company. It yeah, doesn't happen. Bag. And yeah, so I think, I think what you're really seeing, Jason, is a few people embrace it. Those people may be 50 to 100% more productive. But when you blend that into the entire workforce, it's still a single digit percentage, which means the overall yeah, productivity because, gains are nominal. Yeah, I, yet I think that's a fair forced, point. Because yet you're being I'm, forced to spend... Yeah. Again, seven hundred and fifty billion dollars a year. It yeah. doesn't all hang together yet. Yeah, I agree. There's going to be a, a bit of a gap there, and and I am biased because I see startups which are always looking for the most resourceful way to do things. And you're talking about large enterprises which are slow to adopt, right? No, but, so and, and I think we both could be right here. Yeah, you get around the innovators' dilemma by saying, guys, you need to be AI first from the outset, which a startup can do because they can they can recruit people that, for example, with eighty ninety, same thing. You must use these tools. For example, we are not allowed to have any administrative staff. Everything Same, is done yeah. by an agent or workflow. But that's because we're a new company and we can make those decisions. But somebody who is at an, an established company, I suspect that these, that these gains are nominal at best, yet the spend is outrageous. And, it gets, okay. it, and when it catches up with Got you, it. when you report, I think the market is sort of like well, saying. Well, I, I, I think the first, the, you know, the general statement might be made that perhaps the first AI mini bubble is bursting a bit. And particularly with respect to the accelerated expectations that public market investors had for public market technology stocks, that perhaps now is the time for a bit of a reckoning, that perhaps this isn't going to happen at the same margin level or the pace that folks had modeled. And Correct. this is going to cause a bit of a setback. I think pace is a very good point you're making. I also think that with the GDP slowdown that we've seen report that just came out this week, with a sub 2% US GDP growth, we are seeing an economic slowdown underway. There is going to be reduced spending. There is going to be reduced conversion of enterprise customers to buy anything. 
Hmm. And so that is going to dramatically affect the market. We're looking at 5% 30-year treasury rates, which means that you are going to see multiple compression that's going to happen across the market for tech stocks. So this could be the beginning of what I think might be a slow contraction. One thing you I know, just want to make I'm sure... A, I'm not a market guy. Just one thing to... Make, I, I, I do have some information on the Dell stuff. One thing to keep in mind is they had like a 30% run-up or 20% run-up at least right, right. since NVIDIA CEO praised them. And like, I guess all these meme stock people's just jumped in. So I think it's just like a little ticky-tacky correction back to the ticky-tacky.